Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about The Flash Season 8, Episode 16. This was the episode that aired last night. We have a lot to break down because this episode, even though it was an interlude episode, actually quite a lot went down and it was very, very interesting, especially with the aging aspect and the ending. So if you do go on to enjoy the video and if you enjoyed the episode, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any future DCTV videos later this year. But for now, we're going to be going ahead and talking about this episode, episode 16 titled The Curious Case of Bartholomew Allen. This was directed by Katie Lotz. This is technically an interlude episode according to Eric Wallace, the showrunner of The Flash. However, it felt like, just like last episode, to be more than an interlude episode and actually teasing some of the stuff that's going to be happening later down the line. I still have a problem with them calling it interlude episodes because it makes it seem like it's a little bit pointless. And I feel like this episode was more than just a kind of break episode just between, you know, two villains coming in. So I thought it was actually a very good episode. I really enjoyed it. I just finished watching it pretty recently and this is fresh in my mind so we're going to go ahead and jump into the review and breakdown for the episode. So let's begin at the start. So we have the Flash, he's out running around, he stops a car from driving into an old woman, he saves the old woman and she's like, oh thanks Flash, like thanks for saving my life and she's like, I'm going to treat you and then he's like, I can't take your money and then suddenly out of nowhere she pulls out like a candy or something and it was just a very sweet endearing way to start the episode then we quickly jump over and Chester in his comms is like Barry we need you and so obviously we're thinking oh something's going down like there is another crime he needs to get back but no it turns out he runs back and he defeats the other team at Dungeons and Dragons it seems or he gives them a head start basically ahead of the other team and Joe is like I have no idea what's going on and I love that opening. I just thought it was very endearing, nice way to open the episode that really kind of emphasized the family aspect of the show. And so personally, I have no idea how Dungeons of Dragons work. So I was in the complete same place as Joe. And I was like, yes, thank you. Someone said it because every time they said something, I was like, what is going on here? Like, I have no idea, but I'm sure a lot of you guys are fans and probably were very excited to see this in the show. So, yeah, let's move on from here. So we have the Chief. Chief Singh is back and he's at Barry's lab and he's upset that Kramer figured out that Barry was the Flash by herself. Obviously, he found out first and, you know, that's just like a funny joke with the return of his character. I was very pleased to see him show up because it's completely if I'm being honest like I totally forgot that he existed but if you think back to season one and season two and stuff he always played a big role especially with CCPD and Joe so it was great to have him back in a different kind of role yes he's still the chief of police however he is very much so now just like focusing on Joe in this episode and has a couple of great interactions with Barry like at the start and so he's come to Barry about a break-in that just recently happened and he thinks that whatever was stolen at Mercury Labs actually needs to be dealt with by the Flash because it seems if the device actually goes out of hand and into the wrong person's hand, things could go totally wrong for the city. And so Barry finds the villain and gets hit by a wave of gamma radiation that had been modified from what was originally stolen. And so the villain is this guy I don't know what his name is, but from here on out, we're going to refer to him as the Doctor. He is just a doctor, and he, in the past, you know, worked for various different labs, and he was fired because of him basically conducting illegal experiments. And his main focus is basically on de-aging people, or de-aging himself specifically, and by modifying his device, the gamma radiation that spreads out into the city is basically going to speed up people's aging process like a hundredfold and in the end it's going to power him so that he can turn younger and so obviously it's very selfish but that is just the way the villains work all right so let's move on so barry wakes up in star labs after he's been hit by the wave and gideon runs some diagnostics and some tests and finds out that barry has now a multitude of health problems his internal biology absorbed the whole shock of the wave and basically 
turned his time clock with inside of his body basically up by 30 years. That is what Chester says. He's aged 30 years over the course of like a day. And he then once again after this faces off against the Doctor despite all of Team Flash's warnings because basically if he goes around running he's going to age much much faster. It kicks off the kind of acceleration with inside Barry's body and so at this point when he confronts the Doctor again who has stolen another device, some sort of like hand grenade device and he throws it at Barry and Barry's like oh, I'm gonna catch this and suddenly Everything goes out of focus and Barry's vision goes bad and he gets hit by the new device and with all of that and all of his running, he ages another 10 years and so Barry is still determined to stop the Doctor but with him aging 10 years he now has grey hairs which Allegra points out. It's clear that this has taken a huge toll on him, I mean he's aged like 40 years in a matter of less than 2 days I would presume, I don't know the exact timeline. But it's very curious and I actually really love the storyline, it is totally like Benjamin Button if you guys have seen the film, definitely that is where they get their inspiration from in this episode. However, what is interesting is it's related to his speed force and you know he isn't able to use his speed force energy without sacrificing years on his life. And so he has this big dilemma throughout the whole episode, does he use it to try and stop the villain? in order to protect everyone else but then sacrifice his years and basically what happens if by the time he stops the villain is Iris not going to be back and is Barry going to die before Iris comes back and so you know he goes through this huge thing in this episode and Cecile ends up driving him to the lab and this is the lab of the villain because they need to get some information on him and Barry is again still determined and so Cecile's like you know what, we can go, but I'm driving you. And so off they go, they show up to the lab, they find out more about him based on, you know, the ID that they made with some CCTV footage, and Barry turns out now has memory loss as he runs back to Star Labs to try and give Chester the Doctor's laptop, which is basically on like a one minute timer to erase everything on the drive, basically is just set up as a way to, you know, protect himself. But Barry, instead of running back to Star Labs, accidentally runs him and Cecile to China. And so he's just there in the middle of nowhere. He's like, what is going on? Like, I don't remember anything. And he's like, how did I get here? And so his memory loss is kicking in. And then we go over to Joe and the Chief. So Chief Singh basically talks to Joe about, you know, the way that he is kind of acting. Because this whole episode, we see Joe trying to grapple with the fact that you know, retirement can be good and he doesn't always have to be like doing new things and you know, kind of clinging on to the past and he just points out the fact that he has raised the Flash, one of the greatest people to walk on earth and he convinces him that there is still so much more ahead of him and basically Joe just learns to embrace what is ahead and that leads into one of the final scenes towards the end of the episode which we'll get to in a minute and so Barry's lost in Star Labs once they get back and Cecile finds him stumbling around the corridors. Barry, again, with his memory loss and kind of dementia really kicking in really hard at this point, doesn't remember where he is and him and Cecile go on to have like a pretty long extended conversation about, you know, his fears and everything surrounding what he's going through inside internally. And obviously he is aging and he basically feels like he's losing time and he's scared about like what happens if Iris doesn't come back and he's already dead by then. So it's a thing that people go through but Barry's, you know, having to go through it at an early point. He thought he had so many years ahead of him but it turns out it could possibly be, you know, nearing the end for him but that's just because of this villain so they have to figure out how to stop this guy and so they try and actually do this in the next scene because Barry finds the villain, he runs circles around the device which the villain, the Doctor, has powered on and as Barry goes round and round and round he uses so much of his speed force energy that he turns really old. He gets to over 100 years internally and externally. You get to see Barry's face as it transforms in an instant and wrinkles up to be over 100 years old and thankfully he is fast enough to reverse the device 
as it overloads, turning back Barry to his normal self. And for a second then, when we didn't see Barry's face, I was like, oh god, is he going to stay like this old and decrepit? But it turns out that, you know, the device doesn't work anymore and it's basically aged the Doctor who becomes older and loses out on time like Barry had previously and actually made Barry younger. And so the Doctor is sent to prison and then Barry back at Star Labs is told by Chester that he is younger by a year now and he's back to 29 so they can celebrate the 30th birthday again next year. So... That's pretty lucky for Barry, he is definitely leveled up and now he's even younger, like that's crazy. So the villain did Barry actually a favour by putting him through all of this. And so then we go back to the West household. Singh is there with Joe, even though Joe isn't in the scene at this point and Singh is basically catching up with the team and he talks to Allegra and it turns out that Allegra doesn't have a superhero name and at that point we're like, hmm, that's true, like we don't actually think about that but to be honest, like Allegra said, she's not really that public and she hasn't really done anything like uber heroic because most of the time it's like Frost or it's Barry or it's Cisco out there on the field and Allegra is like just using her powers when she absolutely has to use her powers and she doesn't really go out like the Flash and save people, she kind of just does it when a villain shows up and she is absolutely needed and so it kind of makes sense that she doesn't have like a code name yet, she is just Allegra because she isn't really a superhero but Singh does point out a very valid point that it's strange she hasn't you know kind of developed that even more already and so at this point Joe shows up having read the manual to D&D &D, and dresses up as a wizard and he's like you shall not pass and basically he really gets involved in the game and this is just you know a sign of him actually learning and kind of embracing moving on to different things. And so it was a really great way to end off Joe's arc in this episode. And then we continue with the final scene as Barry visits Caitlin after a call from Caitlin's mum saying that she wasn't with her, she hasn't been seen. And he finds the temporary frost lab in Caitlin's apartment as he phases through the door. And then he sees Caitlin, he confronts her about the testing and it turns out she has the mirror gun, she's trying to somehow split the last piece of frost that she thinks she has with inside of herself to resurrect and bring back frost and obviously Barry is completely against this. He tries to convince Caitlin before he actually destroys Caitlin's lab in order to stop her experiments. She's obviously devastated but by doing this is this somehow leading to the rebirth of frost? I'm not sure but there is this one bit where one of the pieces of frost clothing dropped on the ground and I feel like that is a sign that is a symbol for what is to come and I'm very curious how frost is going to come back if she's going to come back but obviously Barry definitely taking big steps here that is very bold and obviously this is devastating for Caitlin and Barry knows it but he feels destroying all of this is the best way to stop her but I don't think that's going to stop her and I think by doing this he's accidentally going to lead towards Caitlyn working even harder to bring in Frost back just to prove a point and also you know personally she really wants it so yeah that's a crazy end to the episode Barry goes berserk and destroys everything after succeeding in this episode with the Doctor and I can't wait to see where this continues. I thought this was a very, very good episode. I thought it was very good, like, all around, very interesting. Actually, one of my favorite episodes, maybe, of the whole season. I thought the concept of Barry aging was definitely a very good narrative device that they used in the episode. And I hope they kind of go back to, you know, a similar idea to this some point in the future. Not exactly the same, but utilizing something as powerful and as pressing as aging to kind of speed up events and make big decisions on the spot because you know time is running out it's definitely a good device so that is about it for this video guys thank you guys so much for watching if you did enjoy the video please be sure to leave a like and a comment that would really help video get out there also please be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos and you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video but for now, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.
Icy Road.